ಓಂ ವಿಶ್ವ ದರ್ಪಣ ದೃಶ್ಯಮಾನ ನಗರಿ ತುಲ್ಯ ನಿಜಾಂತರ್ಗತ ಪಶ್ಯನ್ನಾತ್ಮನಿ ಮಾಯ ಬಹಿರಿವೋದ್ಭೂತ ಯಥಾ ನಿದ್ರೆಯ ಯಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಕುರುತೆ ಪ್ರಬೋಧ ಸಮಯ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಾನೇವಾ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಿದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಬೀಜಸ್ಯಾಂತೀಜಸ್ಯಾಂತರಿವಾಂಕುರೋ ಜಗದಿ ಪ್ರಾಂನಿರ್ವಿಕಲ್ಪಂ ಪುನಃ ಮಾಯಾಕಲ್ಪಿತೇಶಕಾಲಕಲನ ವೈಚಿತ್ರಚಿತ್ರೀಕೃತ ಮಾಯಾವೀವ ವಿಜೃಂಭಯತ್ಯಿ ಮಹಾಯೋಗೀ ವಯಸ್ವೆಚ್ಛೆಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಿದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಿದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಂಭಾಂ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಓ ವರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಅಸಂಗಚಿತ್ ವಿಭುರ್ಜೀವ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯೋಕ್ತಸ್ತೃಗೀಶ್ವರ ಯೋಗೋಕ್ತಸ್ತತ್ವಮೋರ್ಥ ಶುದ್ಧೌ ತಾವೀತಿ ಚೇತೃಣು ವಿದ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಪಾಯಿಂಟೆಡ್ ಔಟ್ ದ ಜೀವಾ ನೀಶ್ವರ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ವಾಚ್ಯಾರ್ಥ ಆಫ್ ಎತ್ ತತ್ ಪದ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತ್ವಂ ಪದ ಆರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಟಪಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ ಟು ಅರೈವ್ ಎಟ್ ಎ ಲಕ್ಷಾರ್ಥ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಪಾರ್ಮಾರ್ಥಿಕ್ ಸತ್ಯಂ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಎಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಆರ್ ಎ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಆರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸೊ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಅರೈವ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿಸ್ consciousness <coughs> which is same in both as a reality our focus should be more on this kutastha which is ever free kutastha or sakshi same thing so after claiming this uh, nitya mukti claiming nitya mukti is jivan mukti claiming nitya mukti is jivan mukti that's all there is no other <laughs> jivan mukti It's claiming nitya mukti i am free i claim it now so i am jivan mukta that's all no there's a word jivan mukti and we they so this basically panchadashi you know he does this job it this is this looms large in our head so jivan mukti videh mukti is all vyavarika only one mukti is that i am free i am ever free i was free i am free and i will be free even after many janmas and if i don't remove in ignorance also i am free that's my nature i mean so i only thing is uh, well due to ignorance i have a notion that i am not free i have to drop the notion that i am not free this is mukti <laughs> so you have not to work for mukti you have to work for dropping the notion because mukti is a reality for you and therefore even if you, what is real will never be negated whether you know it or not whether you know the rope as a snake the reality is that it will be a rope only it won't change to snake rope does not get changed to snake in your mind there is a snake and the reality is only rope only so this is how it is so nitya mukti is the mukti that's how i told you so after claiming that permanent mukti or nitya mukti dal don't dwell too much now on this vyavarika jiva etc or vyavarika ishvara <coughs> because both are product of maya and since maya is basically anirvachaniya rupam so both are anirvachaniya so if you dwell uh, upon uh, anything which is my come if you dwell more you get answers also but more the questions will also come this is the nature of a my come nature of anirvachaniya nature of a mithya thing is this 
that more you dwell upon it you get answers also but more questions also will come and therefore uh, vidyaranya says that you drop them because both are product of maya we have seen that jiva and ishvara both are product of maya anyway so and uh, once you get few answers you get more questions then again you try to find more answers then you get more questions and so you are trapped you are trapped you dwell too much on an individual or you dwell too much on a ishvara even jagat also we know we know this and therefore it be, uh, we get trapped into that and well it becomes obstacle to attain a parmarthik uh, uh, reality which is there in present <coughs> so aim of moksha is basically claiming ever um, obtaining mukti and from that standpoint this jivan mukti and vidhe mukti are empirical reality only empirical by products you can say it's a basically a status of a mind of a gnani <clears throat> so how he got that you know refined thoughts etc uh, like karuna and you know the compassion and then satisfaction and etc etc you know and so all these things akrodha uh, akra kama etc etc there are many things have been narrated like that all descriptions of a gnani jivan mukta are from the standpoint of a mind of a gnani and if so if you probe into this jivan mukta well you are again caught up in this empirical reality because and from mental angle uh, uh, perfect uh, freedom does not exist at any time and therefore because mind being what it is what can we do mind is limited it has both the kinds of things and therefore uh, basically if you probe a jivan mukta from the stand if you probe a jivan mukta means you are probing that gnani from the standpoint of mind so we have come down from parmarthik to the vyavaharik already and uh, then definitely so neither yourself neither a jivan mukta uh, evaluate from the standpoint of mind never because that is not the reality of person but reality is that the person is free brahma vid brahma eva bhavati he is brahman i am also brahman he claims i don't claim that's all the difference between two people is this one claims the reality other does not claim the reality that's the difference so one is called jivan mukta one who claims definitely because knowledge ignorance has gone so <clears throat> they give a description of a jivan mukta from the standpoint of a mind etc adveshta sarva bhutanam this 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 etc vitaraga bhaya krodha sthita dihi etc <clears throat> but we feel of that well from the standpoint of mind only one uh, one should evaluate for, uh, the moksha that's uh, very very <clears throat> the moksha is a parmarthik vastu and mind is a vyavaharik vastu <clears throat> so from a mental angle perfect freedom does not exist at any time so if you look at uh, yourself from the standpoint of mind you will again you will postpone your mukti which is which is there with that you postpone it so <clears throat> that is how even after studying vedanta etc people continue to ju- judge themselves from a vyavarika jiva angle only. so vidyarna says well stop your mental judgment claim your freedom which is there which is your nature which is essentially there so mental improvement will take place you know <clears throat> as a by product see so this is jivan mukti so um, we don't evaluate ourselves from the standpoint of mind i will not myself from the standpoint of the self self and the mind are different things one is one is anatma another is atma so that's a, that's a beauty of this anyway and definition of uh, well vidhay mukti uh, vidhay mukti also is from vyavarika standpoint definition of vidhay mukti is what merging this uh, three bodies into samashti is it vyavarika or parmarthika well it is vyavarika because sharira trayam is a vyavarika and then they are merging into ishvara right merging into ishvara well that is also vyavarika it's merged into samashti also is vyavarika and uh, well it's a just a by product of a knowledge so let us not focus on the by product 
it will happen. It's a byproduct means it will happen automatically. And therefore, where should we, our focus should be there? Well, on this Nitya Gupta, Atma only, which is my nature, which is uh, the reality, <coughs> which was before also and which is now also, the freedom is there. So, Mumukshu Bihi, is by this Mumukshu, dwelling should be like this only. So, this Vyavarika refinement of mind, etc. and Vyavarika merger into Ishvara, Vyavarika refinement of mind, Jivan Mukti, Vyavarika merger into Ishvara, Videh Mukti, don't probe into that. So, and we don't have a method also to know merger of Vyashti into Samashti. We don't have method. Really speaking, if Shastra says and so, we say, okay. So, Bhagavan does not send later also to others that uh, see so and so person, his three bodies have merged into me. Bhagavan does not send it later. So, and it is Bhagavan's job, basically, dealing with my Sukshma Sharira. I have to deal with that I am a Sakshi of Sukshma Sharira. Bhagavan has to deal with my Sukshma Sharira. I have to deal, uh, you know, I, ha- I, I, I should deal with this, that I am a Sakshi of a Sukshma Sharira. That's all. That's a big difference between this. Very important. So don't worry about this Jivan Mukti and Videya Mukti etc. And let others also tag you. Whatever they want to, the way they want to tag you. Nothing to worry about also. Oh you are studying, are you Mukta or not and this and that. <laughs> so let them say whatever they want to say. <laughs> because are you Mukta or not means what? If you are not Mukta, you will be Mukta in the future. That itself shows there is no understanding of Vedanta. Very simple. And therefore, I am free. I was, if I say that I am bound at that time also, I am free. Right? So, I was Mukta, I am Mukta and I will be Mukta. So, Brahman is by nature, it is free. It is, it has a free, it's absolute freedom. Brahman means absolute freedom. No, no limitation of time, no limitation of space. In Desha Kala, before Desha Kala comes, Brahman is there. Where is the question? Desha Kala comes because there is a, there is a disturbance in Maya. Not in Brahman. And therefore, everything, anything which which brings a limitation, right? Anything which brings a limitation, name, form, etc. Which is not there before that, uh, Brahman is there. And therefore, Brahman is free. Absolutely free. And therefore, and that is me. Brahman cannot be other than Atma. There is no Brahman other than Atma. With this, we should put it you know, with, with the golden letters. There is no Brahman without Atma. And therefore, you, 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 the Atma happens to be Brahman. And therefore, better claim it that you are absolutely free. And therefore, this Jivan Mukti and Vyavara, this Videya Mukti and merging and all this, one has not to worry about it. <clears throat> Same way, one has not to too much go into the detail of Jiva and Ishwara and all and uh, the, their connections and it has to be dropped. So this is what uh, Acharya has to tell. A time may come, he may say that you have to, uh, you know, gain a grace of Ishwar accent. That is also required. But what is the reality also should be taught. Teaching should be complete. So Acharya, it, when it is required now, now the question of a Tattva Masi, Asi is as a discuss, under the discussion. That both are one. That time he should not keep on saying that, well, oh, you better worship Ishwara and bring uh, grace. And now this is not a topic. There is a when they are talking about identity between two. So what are the things which is which is to be told? They will tell. And therefore, this has been told. Now then, student raises a question that there are other systems of philosophy which uh, you know tell different uh, things about Jiva and Ishwara. I mean, they define differently. So then we get a doubt. So that's how we are plunged into the discussion of Jiva and Ishwara. We also don't want. But they define in a um, way which uh, we may find correct or we may not find correct. They define Ishwara in a way well we don't find, maybe we don't find correct. So we'll have to enter into the discussion etc. <clears throat> like Sankhya's and Yoga's and Nayayika and Vaisheshika, you know, they have different uh, definitions. And uh, what do you think? Should we, should we not clarify? Because you are saying you should not enter into the discussion. So, should we not clarify all these things, etc. So, well, um, it should be clarified because it is part of mananam. Yeah. And therefore, in, um, well, in absence of mananam, nididhyasanam won't take place. Well, if doubt is there, 
then how will you do nididhyasana nididhyasana means the knowledge should be clear now you are in a process of removing a habitual error right taking it's an habit of taking the body as a self it's a for since anadi kala this mechanical thinking is going on generally we have a mechanical thinking generally even while doing while taking a bath what we think we don't know once we come out then <laughs> then we realize certain so this is how it is so while making tea also some mechanical thinking going on most of the actions are mechanical and so taking body also as the self is so is is an it is it's an habit now and therefore knowledge is clear but then habit has been formed so one has to you know basically free from this habit that's called nididhyasana and habit is also is okay but then it's a habitual error it's an error now you know clearly that you are basically shariratra vilakshanam you know that you are distinct from three bodies and still you take the body as a self it's an error and therefore one has to become free so but mananam should do a job of removing all the doubts pertaining to a jiva or ishvara and therefore well we will have to take into account what others say about it because their doubt if i don't answer at least in my mind that his doubt is not his doubt now it is my doubt and therefore <laughs> there i have to resolve that doubt and if for that sake you will have to enter into the discussion of jiva and ishvara what the way they define may be correct may not be correct <clears throat> and then well vidyarnya says okay at time of mananam you can assess the views of others regarding jiva and ishvara and dismiss the false one but don't get permanently stuck into that sooner or later while well, you should transcend this dvaitam jiva and ishvara etc etc come to this advaitam which is a reality for you there is nothing other than you in the creation that's a reality and therefore better you realize it better you claim it <clears throat> i mean otherwise this we 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 enter uh, uh, through the analysis of jiva and ishvara that is correct but that's a means so let the let not this means becomes the end for you so you remain into that only while well, all the time analyzing jiva and ishvara analyzing jiva and ishvara and uh, you will remain in dvaitam then and which is my kama ultimately because you won't find a final answer regarding an individual you won't find a final answer regarding ishvara also you won't find a final answer and therefore basically then drop them <clears throat> so vidyarnya says well uh, you want to enter into the discussion because others are giving a definition of uh, you uh, this jiva and ishvara differently you want to enter into discussion don't worry i am also helping you and therefore <laughs> now he is helping us so in verse 220 when he introduced this um, the view of a sankhya and yoga regarding jiva and ishvara what it is said is असंगचित विभु जीव सांख्योक्ता वेल सांख्या से दिस जीव इज ए असंग रिलेशनलेस कनेक्शनलेस एक्सेट्रा और एसोसिएशनलेस देर इज नो एसोसिएशन जीवा हेज नो एसोसिएशन असंग चित चैतन्य एंड विभु ऑल परवेडिंग जीवा इज ऑल परवेडिंग एंड एसोसिएशनलेस और रिलेशनलेस कॉन्शियसनेस and therefore association less means shuddha also naturally not connected to anything not tainted by anything asangam and therefore that is what uh, sankhya says jiva is like this then tadrug ishvara yogokta yoga people well they say they are actually the older brother of a sankhya or a elder uh, or a younger brother whatever so so this yoga generally their philosophy is a <coughs> sankhya philosophy but the difference is yoga people accept um, ishvara sankhyas don't accept so sankhya talks about jiva that jiva is asangam and uh, all pervading and consciousness sankhya yoga says tadrug ishvara yogokta yogena yukta so this yoga people says ishvara also is like this asangam all pervading and um, consciousness and well uh, then so here the purupaksha says well that's fine see sankhya says uh, the jiva is basically asangam 
associationless, all-pervading consciousness. And that is the meaning of your Tvampada. He is telling us. Purupakshi says, well, that is the meaning of a Tvampada. Tvampada Lakshartha is this. Asangam Jiva is what? Asangam all-pervading consciousness. And uh, yoga people say Tadruk Ishvara. Ishvara also is like this. Ishvara is all, also uh, associationless, all-pervading consciousness. That is your Tatpada. He says, Purapakshi says, that is your meaning of a Tatpada. And therefore, why are you negating uh, well uh, Sankhyas and Yoga? Because ultimately what they give a definition of a Jiva by Sankhya and Ishvara by Yoga, that is the, your meaning of a Tat and Tvam. Could you follow what I am saying? And therefore, so it says here, Tattvamoho Arthav Shuddhav. So basically, why are you negating it? So, Tattvamoho Arthav. Arthav, meaning of this Tat and Tvam, Shuddhav. Means, meaning of this Tat and Tvam, He Vedantin, for you also is Shuddha Chaitanyam. And that is what they are saying. Jiva is also Asanga Shuddha Chaitanyam, all pervading consciousness. Yoga people say Ishwara is also Asangam, all pervading consciousness. Well, that is the meaning of your Tat and Tvam. Right? And therefore, why are you negating them? O Vedantin, why are you negating that? That is what you are also saying. So, uh, so Vidyarana says, Iti Chet, if, if you say so, if you raise us such a question, O Purupakshi, well, Shrono. I will have to tell something to you. It looks that they are also defining in the same manner, but it is not. It is not. So he will give an answer. And we have we have started discussion in that in you know six systems of philosophy, etc. We we have started, right? And in that I told you this Sankhya Shastram is by Kapila. And uh, Yoga is by Patanjali. And um, Vyasacharya Ji has refuted Sankhya philosophy in a Brahma Sutra. 130 sutras for, for refuting Sankhya. They are very close to Vedanta. Very close. Only few aspects are there where because of that they Sankhyas are Sankhya and Vedanta are Vedanta. Sankhyas are Dvaita Vadi. We are Advaita Vadi. I will I'll explain that a little bit and we will see also in our <coughs> other class. And uh, so Vyasacharya ji refutes uh, Brahma, in Brahma Sutra, in 130 sutras, Sankhya philosophy refutes. And then he makes one sutra to refute yoga. He says, Etena yoga pratyuktaha. Whatever I have given you the reasoning, whatever I have, you know, argued, given all the arguments against the Sankhya to refute them, same is applied to yoga also. Etena, etena karanena yoga pratyukta. So by, by this reason also, I am answering pratyukta. I am giving back, I am mean, I mean answering them. I am replying rather. Yoga. So yoga people also. Anyway, so, uh, but here Vidyaranya raises this question that when definitions are equal, uh, then why are you rejecting? Anyway, now Vidyaranya gives an answer. <coughs> 222. Vidyaranya says it is not that simple. Problem is there. Otherwise, why should I refute them? If their definition of a jiva given by Sankhya and definition of Ishvara given by the yoga people. If they are like our definition of a Tat and Tvampada, then why should I refute? I am not uh, interested in refuting for the sake of refutation. Well, but there is a difference. So, problem is there. <clears throat> See, nature, Sankhya says nature of every Jiva is a Asanga Chaitanyam and all pervading etc. I mean, Indra also is Asanga Chaitanyam, Varuna also is Asanga Chaitanyam, Him, human being also is Asanga, all pervading Chaitanyam. Please understand this. Asanga Chaitanyam is one thing. Asangam and all pervading consciousness. Every jiva is a asanga, all pervading consciousness. And yoga people say Ishwara is also like that uh, asangam, all pervading consciousness. Now question is, we ask to this Sankhyas, 
वेरी फाइन जीवा इज अ ऑल परवेडिंग असंगम चैतन्यम कॉन्शियसनेस दैट्स फाइन बट हाउ मेनी सच ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस इज आर देर एंड यू नो वॉट आंसर शुड बी गिवन बाय देम राइट ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस मीन्स हाउ मेनी ऑल परवेडिंग स्पेस हाउ मेनी स्पेसिस वन नेचुरली ऑल परवेडिंग सी नाउ बट द सांख्या सेज नो देर आर इन न्यूमरेबल जीवास मीन्स देर आर इन न्यूमरेबल असंगम ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस इज देर आर इन न्यूमरेबल ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस सो देर आर मेनी जीवास सो देर आर द्वैत दे डोंट एक्सेप्ट ईश्वर बट वन कॉन वन जीवा and other jiva there is a difference even though both are all pervading consciousness that is how 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 it is that i don't know but this is how it is. so so asanga chit vibhu vibhu means sarvagatam all pervading anyway so you are also all pervading consciousness uh, and i am also all pervading consciousness he is also all pervading consciousness etc etc so there are innumerable like that they say, they say so he is a chaitanya bahutvavadi so dvaitvadi rather this is one problem jivas are many in reality i mean huh? in reality don't think so much we also say jivas are many but we don't ex- we say seeming differences are there upadi bhedas so we'll talk about it later anyway but they say no one jiva and other jiva is essentially different dvaitvadi okay now there is another problem also with the sankhyas they say <clears throat> this prakriti well or this matter etc from which the whole creation has come we call maya actually that prakriti is as real as this purusha jiva so consciousness is one reality and this prakriti also another reality and so actually we say is there is no prakriti which is as real as consciousness maya is basically mithya we know we don't we they don't use word maya they say prakriti prakriti means mool karana the primordial cause for the entire creation we say maya they say prakriti that's fine that is okay sometimes we also use the word prakriti but the question is they say purusha and prakriti are both real we say prakriti or this maya the cause of this whole creation primordial cause of the whole creation is mithya is non separate from brahman consciousness they say no both are equally real that way also they are dvaitavadi so <clears throat> basically tattva moho ubhav arthau so two separate objects basically meaning of two separate words tat and tvam in form of two separate consciousness etc na smat siddhantatam gatau is not acceptable to vedanta so uh, here so basically one 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 jiva tvam pada anar jiva anar tvam pada so we we basically say all these differences are seeming differences tat they don't have sankhyas don't have of course because ishvara is not there but in basically two separate consciousnesses are there for two tvam pada let us say here uh, vidyarnya says tat and tvam because yoga people also say See in yoga. Now let me talk about that also. In Sankhya says there is a difference between one jiva and another jiva. Jiva jiva beda is real. Yoga people say jiva Ishwar beda also is real. Ishwar is a purusha vishesha, and uh, I I gave you that definition before perhaps. You know they say klesha karma vipaka ashayehi ashayehi aparamushta ha purusha vishesha ha Ishwar ha. पुरुष विशेष पुरुषोत्तम अमी ईश्वर ही इज फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल दिस क्लेश कर्म विपाक एंड ऑल दिस आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू दिस आर द दोषा सो जीवा हैज दिस दोषा ईश्वर इज फ्री फ्रॉम दोषा सो योगा पीपल बेसिकली एक्सेप्ट जीव ईश्वर भेदा सांख्या एक्सेप्ट सिंस सांख्या डू नॉट बिलीव इन ईश्वर दे एक्सेप्ट जीव जीव भेदा बट भेदा इज देर ultimately jeev ishwar veda is there so what i am saying is so he says tatvamoho ubhav arthau the meaning of the word to both the words tat and tvam so they were two separate words tat and tvam well are different 
टू सेपरेट कॉन्शियसनेस तत् मीन्स ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस एंड तम ऑल्सो मीन्स ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस देर फॉर अल्टीमेटली इट इज वन नो इवन दो वेल बोथ आर ऑल परवेडिंग कॉन्शियसनेस बट दे आर एसेंशियली डिफरेंट हु सेज सैम के एज एन योग वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू टेक तम वेल डिफरेंस बिटवीन टू तम पदा राइट द मीनिंग ऑफ द टू तम पदा आर डिफरेंट और वेल फॉर योगा पीपल तत एंड तम मीनिंग ऑफ टू वर्ड्स तत एंड तम आर डिफरेंट दैट्स वॉट दे से एंड वेल आचार्य से न अस्मत सिद्धांतता हम कहता हूँ अस्मत सिद्धांतता वी विल नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल टू वी आर इट इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल टू वेदांत नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल टू अस अस्मत सिद्धांतता इट इज नॉट इन अवर सिद्धांत दैट देर इज अ रियल डिफरेंस बिटवीन तम एंड तम एंड देर इज अ रियल डिफरेंस बिटवीन तत एंड तम right there is no real difference so two words are there but then uh, not two separate consciousnesses you two words are there but the meaning is ultimately one so he was waiting for this opportunity he asked the question if you don't accept basically two consciousnesses as two and the, as the meaning of two words tat and tvam so why are you using two words If thought is also consciousness, tam also means a consciousness. Means meaning is one only. Then why are you using two words? He is asking us. If you are using two words, there should be a separate meaning. Even though you, it is a consciousness in both the case, but one all-pervading consciousness must be different from another all-pervading consciousness. Otherwise, it will be a synonymous. Two words are there. Meaning is one. It's synonymous. So then we have to answer now. No, that is so. So just that is also all pervading consciousness, and Tom also is all pervading consciousness. Is essentially one alone. Then why are you using two words? He is asking us. So, uh, well, so why are you using these two words? He is saying when meaning is just one. So two more two words are not required. Use one word because meaning meaning is only one. Then drop one word. Only use one word for one meaning. So answer is well. We use two words as a stepping stones uh, to arrive at this consciousness, basically. So advaita bodhanaaya. Only for revealing consciousness, word tat and tvam is used as intermediate state. So he says sa kaksha ishyate. So intermediate level of teaching. Uh, is used in order to arrive at this uh, uh, oneness of both. So, <clears throat> and now we we explain that. So, when do you write an equation? Because ultimately, tat and tvam are equated by equation. We are without equation. We are not talking anything. And now you, we are asking you a question. When do you write an equation? when do you write an equation if two things are evidently equal you will not require equation 8 is equal to 8 you won't require that equation if tat and tvam essentially they are one means the meaning is just one we don't require equation we don't require equation if two things are unequal and uh, then also we don't write any equation you won't say it is equal to 9 but if two things are seemingly unequal you count as two but essentially they are one you reveal that identity by an equation ah okay so this is so we we it's not a synonymous words tat and tvam apparently different definitely everyone says jivan ishwara are one who says no one says so jivan ishwara and, and not just by 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 uh, i mean just by some chance jiva is jiva ishwara is ishwara alpagna alpa shaktiman and sarvagna sarva shaktiman superior attributes inferior attributes they are there so differences are there so well and therefore you need two words that means basically ishwara 
Wrong means a jiva. One is a karma phala data, antaryami, etc. Other one is a seeking karma phala, etc. Through grace, whatever. So, basically, if two things are seemingly unequal, means you count them as a two, but it is essentially one. In that case, we have to reveal that equality, identity by an equation. Without equation, we are not talking about Jiveshwara Ikyam. That equation alone is called Mahavakya. And therefore, so we do write as two separate things. Seemingly unequal are really equal. Like 5 plus 3 is equal to 9 minus 1. <laughs> this is, this is, these are our standard examples. So all physical numbers, 5, 3, 9, 1, all are different. Even then mathematical signs are different, plus and minus, etc. on the both the sides. So they are seemingly different. When they are seemingly different, you will have, you require both the sides. If equal, means you don't require two sides. Like 8 is equal to 8, who will write? You don't write. When you write two, two sides, means there must be difference. But to indicate a seeming difference, we write is equal to. Yeah. We write is equal to. So two things are different. We will not write is equal to. But two things are apparently different. To reveal the essential identity, we write equal to. So 5, 3, 9, 1. Different. Plus, minus different. Oh, but 5 plus 3 is nothing but 9 minus 1. We write equal to. And therefore, two words are okay. Nothing nothing to worry about. So, I write on two sides. So, when two things are seemingly different, by putting equation, uh, well, we negate the differences. In X, in, so, in beginning, I accept that seeming duality because I write on both the sides. Tatpada and Tvampada. So when I write as a two sides, I accept seeming difference on both the sides. That is called intermediate state of equation. That's called sa kaksha, kaksha. Kaksha means it is intermediate state. Ishyate, it is acceptable, it is desired, it is required. So that is how we have two words. So this is called intermediate state of equation. When you write both the sides and to indicate the um, the differences between them to indicate the differences which are seeming uh, to indicate that seeming difference we write equal to so students think there are two really two different things but asi pada well so tat and tom are different everyone is born with this one who enters into vedanta also will come with this difference only that jiva is different ishwara is different and well so in beginning of course uh, well um, of the class well student thinks they are different so teachers also accept difference temporarily and jiva and ishwar are introduced separately also on two sides by putting equation and uh, well and then seeming duality is negated by putting equal to sign so negation of duality is a final stage acceptance of a duality initially is an intermediate state and when well uh, if the difference is there and therefore we have to use two words tat and tva. but ultimately they essentially it is they are one so basically so far revealing so they says here so in the final stage of course this neither tat or tvam um, will have a difference there is only a chaitanya and so for revealing advaita bodhanaya sakaksha so for the for the revealing, for, for teaching rather, Advaita Bodhana, for teaching this non-duality between the two, essential oneness between the two, Sakaksha, this intermediate state of a difference, duality is accepted. Whereas for Sankhya, Yoga and other people, the, well, initially also Jiva, Jiva is different or Jiva, Ishwara is different and finally also Jiva and Ishwara are different. So, so basically, uh, this is the difference between Sankhya Yoga and us. And therefore, well, ultimately, you are saying that, well, Jiva is a Asangam, all-pervading consciousness. Ishvara is also Asangam, all-pervading consciousness. And therefore, well, there is no difference of 
of a for a Vedantin and Sankhyas for defining Jiva and Ishwara. That's not true. Well, they accept the differences. Uh, even though they say Asanga Chaitanyam, all pervading consciousness, Jiva is defined like this. Still, that Jiva is different from another Jiva. Another is also all pervading consciousness. Then all pervading consciousness means there will be both, well, one Jiva and the other Jiva, there is no difference. Essentially, they are one. No, they are different. Who says? Sankhya says. And Jiva and Ishwara also are finally also. They are, they are, they are different all the time. So that is so ultimately, this is not us. We initially accept, accept the difference between the two. Because the one who enters into Vedanta class well will will come with that. And so intermediately we accept the difference and we put the equation. We put two sides itself shows that, that we have accepted the difference. But that difference is seeming that is revealed by that equation. That equal to sign. And therefore this is how it is. So Kachit Kaksha Ishyati. Kachit means this temporary level, intermediate level of a difference etc is accepted by Vedantin and for that for seeming difference also we have need two words that Tat and Tam. We call Vachyartha etc. But there is not a final meaning of either a Tam, Jiva or a Tat, Ishvara. Let's go to 2.23. Anadi Mayaya Brandaha Jive Shausu Vilakshanau Manyante tadvyudasaya kevalam shodhanam tayo. Now, Vidyarana clarifies that thing also that seeming duality uh, is, you know, is, is, a, is a difference here. So, it is taken as a real difference by ignorant people. <clears throat> Why? Vidyarana says, Brantaha, Branta, confused, deluded jivas, deluded individuals. Uh, deluded by what? Anadi Mayaya. So deluded by, because of Maya, they are deluded, taking Ishra as different from the Jiva or from oneself. And so once I say Jiva is deluded, then all questions, series of questions come. Once we say Jiva is deluded, so they will say from when, from when did he delude? When delusion started? And when did first Jiva come? When did first karma come? And when did first creation come? All questions will come. So, Vidyanya just says one word and says, all, all questions have one answer and that is anadi. Okay. So, <laughs> so anadi means don't, don't ask when. When will not, that question, when will not be there? If I say beginningless. When indicates a beginning. And therefore, when you say when, I mean, if you are asking with when, well, it's anadi, we say, beginningless. And therefore, there is no question of when at all. So, because beginningless, maya, beginningless, jiva, beginningless, creation, beginningless, delusion, because jiva means agnyan. So, if it is jiva is beginning, less means agnyanam also is beginningless. Therefore, delusion also is beginningless. And therefore, when did jiva delude? Anadi. When did Jiva come? Anadi. When did creation come? Anadi. When did karma come? Anadi. Okay. So, Brantaha <laughs> Manyante. So, Brantaha, basically, uh, these people, Manyante. Manyante means they believe. What? Difference between Jiva and Ishwara. Well, they, they have this false notion. They assume misconception. Jivesha su vilakshanau. Well, Jiva Isha Suvilakshanao. Well, this is a delusion of Jiva that both are, Jiva and Ishwara are different. But they think that the Parmarthic Veda is there between them. They believe that way. So I don't deny the you know, perceptual difference. I am not talking about Ishwara, but the perceptual difference is there all the time and it is very useful. This Veda is a fantastic thing. Really. You imagine. <laughs> Yesterday, I think I told you, right? Yesterday or day before yesterday, I don't know. But Veda is there. Well, uh, then uh, uh, there is a water and there is a glass. So if you don't different, recognize the difference. What will happen? Instead of a glass, instead of a water, you take glass. 
So plate is there, food is there, what is to be taken, what is not to be taken, you should know the difference. Plate is plate and uh, food is food. Veda is an excellent thing. No Vahara is possible if Veda is not there. No Vahara. I think human being cannot live. One who cannot recognize the difference cannot live at all. He can't live. See, Vedantin is saying, yeah, but for Vevara, I am saying again, Veda and Vevara goes together. Whole Veda is based on Vevara or Vevara is based on Veda either. But essentially, two things which are different in Vevara will be one as in a, in a true sense. And that's what we know. Ring is a ring and a chain is a chain. One you put it in a neck and other you put in a finger. It does not mean essentially they are different. What is useful in a Vavara is all Veda. Mithya only. That's what we say. Therefore it is good. So Pratyaksha Pramana reveals it also. That is what it does. Pratyaksha Pramana reveals difference. Veda. Shruti Pramana reveals a Veda. And therefore, then both should be taken. That's what we discussed. If you remember, that Pratyaksha Pramana reveals Veda. Shruti reveals a Veda. Then let Veda, Veda, Vada only we should do. But Veda is a Mithya. Yeah, otherwise we will accept Veda, Veda, Vada. So, Vyavari, Veda, Veda, Vada also. Yeah. Vyavara, Veda, Veda, Vada is okay. Vishishta Advaitin also is okay. Vyavare, we are Vishishta Advaitin. No problem. Jiva is, I am a Jiva and I am Amsha of a Narayana. Fine, no problem. Yeah. But when we talk about the reality, well, this Veda does not stand. You know, scrutiny. Pratyaksha reveals a Veda. That's okay. So, Akasha is different from Vayu and Vayu is different from Agni and Vyashti Sharira is different from Samashti Sharira, etc. So, Vivirat and this, you know. So, we are worried Veda, Advaitin accepts. And that's how he begins. Advaitin starts the class of Advaita, begins with the prayer. <laughs> Shanti Mantra accepts. <laughs> and therefore, ultimately, yeah, there is... Anyway, and that is the job of a Guru ultimately. But Tad Vidasaya, see. Tad Vidasaya means this Vailakshanyam Vidasaya. For negation of the difference between Jiva and Ishvara from a Paramarthic angle, well, ultimately, Tayoho uh, Shodhanam. Well, Tat and Tompada Shodhanam has to be done. So, assume real difference, uh, well, is negated. Assumed real difference is negated. Unassumed, unreal difference is established. Yeah. Assumed real difference is negated. Unassumed, unreal difference is established by a teacher. That is what it is. And therefore, so like in Sapna also we have Veda. The drinker is different. The glass is different. The water is different. The very drinking process is different. All are there. Veda. But still, from a vehicle standpoint, they are all Mithya. When you are in a Sapna, you say all is all are different. But when you wake up, you find the whole thing is Mithya. So called Veda is Mithya. That is what it is. And therefore, Vidasaha. Vidasaha means a, you know, negation, elimination. V plus uh, uh, Ud plus Asdhatu, fourth conjugation. So, Vidasyati means to negate, to eliminate. So, here Vidasaha is equal to elimination. Elimination of what? Vailakshanyam. Vailakshanya Vidasaya. Tad Vidasaya. Vidyarinya says. Tad means this Vilakshanata, the difference. Between what? Between Jiva and Ishvara are eliminated. By what? Tayoho Shodhanam. Shodhanam. Shodhanam means inquiry. Inquiry into this both. Tatpada and Tampada. By inquiring into both. But uh, Shodhanam also means a Shuddhi. Purification actually. And uh, this is true. Well, the Tat and Tvam are, you know, purified by inquiry. The impurities are removed from both the sides. Okay? The mithya part has been removed from both. From the vachyartha, both are removed. 
<laughs> so from one avidya is gone and avidya that upadi and the reflected consciousness in that upadi also gone both are mithya so then well you gain uh, by the shodhanam by inquiring into tvampada you ultimately gain consciousness pure consciousness right so they use like this tattvam shodhanam shodhanam means actually shuddhikaranam purification man that's true inquiry itself well removes this impurities we remove impurities branti also you can say tat and tvam basically are different jiva and ishwara are essentially different that branti is a impurity that brahma is a impurity that is removed by the inquiry itself so accepting their seeming difference we go to either avasthatra viveka either we go to panchakosha viveka or um, i mean sharira viveka whatever but ultimately we arrive at the oneness of both and kevalam it has been told so you can see this so jivesho suvilakshanau tad vidasaye kevalam manyante kevalam tad vidasaye manyante kevalam means basically we are accepting a temporary uh, difference between the two and uh, well we begin with that and we inquire into this two independently and we found that there is only a seeming difference or difference based on upadi avidya and maya and the reflected consciousness etc which is mithya and therefore we remove that differences and um, we remove those upadis and we remove also the reflected consciousnesses being mithya we remove them then we arrive at the essential nature of both as just pure consciousness that is what it is <clears throat> 224 ata eva atra drashtantah yogya prapsamya giritah ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಜಲಾಕಾಶ ಬ್ರಖಾತ್ಮಕ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಣ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ವಾಲ್ ಟು ಶೋ ದ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೋತ್ ಎಸ್ ಒನ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಕ್ವೇಶನ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪ್ಲಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ನೈನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಒನ್ ಎನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಫೈವ್ ತ್ರೀ ನೈನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ plus minus different everything but ultimately they are one only so this is example also we can give but vidyaranya's example is this akasha so well i do talk about this gata akasha and mahakasha also i have introduced this two words in the beginning of chapter vidyaranya says and uh, shota thinks that akasha inside the gata and uh, is uh, different and outside the gata outside the pot also is different so he feels there are two akashas gata akasha and mahakasha right is the pot space and the outer space so vedanta says well akasha is neither inside nor outside so basically you know it is all all pots are out, you know within the akasha so now there is not because ultimately akasha is indivisible if anything which is divisible you can definitely for that you can talk about inside and outside like suppose instead of akasha there is a water i will talk that pot within water and pot outside water i can definitely say you should not say well uh, there is one pot in which all uh, i mean there is one water in which all the pots are there no no if i just put a pot here in the room filled up with the water i said the water is inside the pot and outside water is not there outside <laughs> somewhere else there may be water water is divisible what is divisible you, there you can use word inside and outside what is not divisible you can't use word inside outside ha ah. so for akasha you cannot use like this because it is indivisible akasha can be divided so how can you say then inside and outside well etc and therefore uh, and therefore this kind of adjective inside outside adjective with space itself is not possible when two separate nouns are not there where how can you say two separate adjectives you know space well is one noun is one therefore two adjectives well ultimately inside outside cannot be used with this 
two separate uh, nouns are there then you can definitely you can use two separate adjectives so water can be divided so then i can definitely say inside water outside water in ocean or whatever that i can definitely say that i can definitely say so water itself is divisible and so i get two nouns now one which is inside one which is outside but space is something which is indivisible and therefore there is no not called ghatakasha and mahakasha there is akasha in which all the parts and everything is there so well so here in for the self also it is like this yeah we are using word sometimes inner self pratyagatma we use pratyagatma we use that way but you know there is one indivisible self in which all the bodies whole creation is there and so so why then why do you use this uh, word inner self etc because the student uses these two words etc there is one self not qualified as inner and outer so this inner and outer in and out of vedanta will be there but in and out of self will not be there <laughs> in and out of vedanta some something which is out of vedanta that is there yeah but this in and out of self it is not there so he, he says atah eva therefore only atra yogya drishtantah samya giritah yogya drishtanta very appropriate example samya giritah very well have been told by me in the beginning of the chapter what is that example of a space so chaitanya vishay with respect to consciousness i have given you a appropriate example chaitanya is akhandam and indivisible like akasha is akhandam so <clears throat> so there is a very very good similarity between uh, akasha and uh, and the uh, atma well and because see akasha is indivisible chaitanya is indivisible then uh, well akasha is uncontaminated chaitanya consciousness is uncontaminated well and then uh, uh, there are many other you know has all pervading etc etc and therefore basically these are the things by which uh, we can definitely understand this tat and tvam there are no two separate chaitanyams etc or there is no there are no two separate chaitanyams so far as two jivas are also concerned so seeming difference due to upadhi are there well definitely jivas upadhi vidya ishvara upadhi maya etc but there are seeming differences the attributes also seeming i mean the attributes are different superior and inferior attributes are also there but that is also due to upadhi and therefore ultimately essentially it is one thing alone upadhi is a mithya and therefore the differences are also mithya between them essentially it is one thing because uh, the the self or the consciousness is indivisible therefore to to divide anything you need a you need a parts which possesses parts can be divided which is partless can never be divided like i have body it can be divided one part you can you know take it <laughs> or something like so that is possible anything which is having a parts can be divided which is niravayava how will you divide akasha also we accept in example is a niravayam it has it has a parts but uh, you know we accept it as niravayam and so that also so akasha is a niravayam partless consciousness also is partless we that way we in example we compare anyway but so yogya drishtanta this is a appropriate example akasha drishtanta which he has already given gatakasha mahakasha jalakasha We'll see that. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om